Hiya. Um, today I'm going to go through some tips on how to make your makeup last all day, how to prep, how to make sure it's locked into place and what I would advise to kind of touch up through the day if it's starting to feel a little bit more fresh. I'm going to start with the oil and pore control mattifier from Murad. Um, I've got quite a bit of texture in my forehead this week. Now, what I would say to you, um, Bethany, Jan, you had asked me about this kind of makeup going patchy or separating. If that's you, I would really recommend having a little look into some primers. And I would always say go for a primer that does something else that you want it to do. So, for example, this primer for all intents and purposes, primers are there to keep your makeup in place. But this one is an oil and pore control kind of formula. So I'm going to use this on areas that get oily and seem to have slightly more prominent pores. Whereas for you, for example, you might like something that adds radiance, which wouldn't be this primer. You know, have a little think about the key words that you want your makeup to look like and go for a primer that matches those keywords because there's so many to choose from and they all do different things. Um, it just helps you to make sure that you've got something, you've added that little step into your routine that's doing something that you want it to do rather than having a primer for the sake of it. So I've used that really condensed in those areas to give me a bit of extra cover in those places. And now I'm gonna go in with my CC cream in the shade medium. I usually wear a bit of tan, it's kind of, one of those in between days today so this color might not look absolutely perfect on me but i'm okay with that i know when i put my tanning drops on again it will be a lovely match now this sounds so obvious but i feel like we don't always do it if you have certain areas in your makeup that kind of it just will not hold you know maybe it's your chin your cheeks your nose and you're finding that your makeup just will not stay in those places. The first thing I did actually before I started, which I should have mentioned, often the right moisturiser is the key. So if your skin is dry or dehydrated, it's going to try and drink up the moisture from your complexion product, which is going to mean that your complexion product through the day looks a bit more patchy. Whereas if you give your skin a nice drink of moisturiser, it will leave your foundation alone. So prep with something hydrating. I just went in with my daily moisturiser. Then use your primer where you need it, where you're noticing that you need a bit of extra support. And I say that for two reasons. First of all, you're not going to waste it as quickly. It's not going to run out after four weeks because you've been putting everywhere and you didn't need to but also like for example my cheeks are quite dry so if I use a primer that is designed to control oil on an area that's already dry I'm just asking for trouble so you can kind of do your own little diagnosis map on where you need the extra help it means you'll get longer out of your product and that you won't have any areas that feel you know dry or uncomfortable so that CC cream is on. I'm just going in, by the way, I've got a little flannel here to wipe as I go along. I'm not going to lecture anybody on, you know, I'm not the most knowledgeable person on sustainability by any stretch. I'm learning as much as the next person. But little steps like that, I just think it cuts down on wipes and like I'll throw that in the washing machine and use it again. So always nice to just be mindful of these things, isn't it? Okay. The next thing I'm going in with is translucent setting powder. This is the Bye Bye Pores from It Cosmetics. You can use whichever setting powder you already have. If you're finding that your makeup isn't lasting or like you can see on me at the moment, you've got naturally more kind of dewy areas. This is honestly the secret is to keep your powder touching up in those areas. Now, to be honest with you, Obviously, it's a bit of a different time at the moment. For lots of us, we're working at home. I'm also aware that lots and lots of people are still going out every single day, keeping us safe. If you can, top up your powder through the day. And the reason <clears throat> I've just inhaled half of that, so forgive me. I need to catch my breath a moment. The reason I say that is 
nothing, nothing on the market is going to give you this absolutely foolproof all day, no touch ups power. There are things that last really well for a really, really long time. And all of these things I'm showing you are things I would recommend for that. But nothing is foolproof. And I honestly think a lot of the time, if I'm talking to somebody that's disappointed in their makeup or like disappointed in the lasting power and things like that, I actually think it's because we read all of these wild and wonderful claims and nothing's going to deliver exactly that. And so we end up thinking, what am I doing wrong? Why isn't it lasting? All of these things. Whereas actually, I feel like the best way to get your makeup to last all day is to do it as best you can with all of these steps in the morning and keep an eye on it through the day. And I would say that to anybody with any skin type, any skin concern, that is the key. Um, Rebecca, you had asked me to use the beauty books recently. So I'm going to use some of the Bye Bye Pores bronzer. This is the It Girl Beauty Book Volume 3, which was not this year's book, the one before. Um, you can still get it, but I just think there's probably someone like Rebecca. I don't know. I remember actually, Rebecca, I wrote in my book to ask you which book you had because there's been a few of these. But there's probably someone that has this exact book. And yes, it's a year and a bit old, but that doesn't mean it's any the less nice. So I'm just going to sweep that bronzer into some areas where the sun would naturally hit. Little Olaplex update, by the way. Absolutely love it. Like genuinely, that is the best thing I have ever bought for my hair. I've been having, like I've obviously used it a good few times now. When I first told you about it, I was still really new to it. Whereas I've had it for probably, I don't know, a long, long few washes anyway. And it's actually that good that if you use too much of it, it's too much. So today... It was so hydrating. I had to just kind of put a bit of dry shampoo in my hair and things because it was that rich. But it's really nice that you can literally use a tiny bit of it and it makes all the difference. So that is something I've noticed and I thought I'd mention. Okay, this is Laura Mercier. Let me check the blush colour infusion in the shade Watermelon. Really lovely fresh pink. Now I'm going in with this Smith blusher brush which I haven't washed for about three days please excuse me I just haven't got around to it and it's a lovely blush brush what I would say with blusher someone asked me this the other day actually that especially if you've been building coverage and wanting it to last then the risk is when you go in with your blusher you're going to lift what you've already built so literally if possible just tap your blusher into place and I wish you could see the pressure I'm using to do this because it's next to nothing. And really, the way that you want to tap this on, what that's going to do is give you the flush of colour that's giving you that lovely lift. That's a really lovely colour, actually. Um, but it's not going to lift anything underneath it. And I'm just going right in over that nose because, you know, if you went for a little walk or you were naturally a bit flushed. You would be a bit flushed on your nose. So it just kind of ties it all together. So love that. And I'm going to apply that same logic with anything else I might put on top. Let me talk you through that while I'm putting my eyebrows on. I'm going in with the It Brow Powerful. You know, anything that you want to put on top, whether it's highlighter, um, bronzer, anything, really, really soft pressure will mean that you're really just adding to that flawless complexion as opposed to using a, a strong amount of pressure, can't even get my words out, that would lift it off. So I'm going in now with this little brow pencil, sculpting out a little brow arch for myself. And then setting spray wise, I haven't actually bought one to hand today because um, to be perfectly honest with you, <laughs> I'm busy after this and I have to take my base off straight away. I've basically, I think I've mentioned this to you before, but I like to do these videos before I've started my working day. Um, so depending on what I'm doing that day, like I've got QVC shows today, for example. So I'll have to remove this because I always do my makeup during a QVC show to show what the product is. Um, what was my point going to be? I can't remember now. I was going to say something about that. Now, brows are on, base is on. I'm nine minutes in. Gosh, I've taken my time today, haven't I? 
Okay, super quick. Um, let me just double check. This is my, I'm absolutely loving. I kept this book and anytime you ask me for something, I write it in my book and I tick it off when I've done it. So it was, Helen, you had asked me to do eyeliner flicks with liquid instead of shadow. Love that idea. I think it's really lovely as well um, because the thing with shadow is it's so much easier to tidy up if you've got it a little bit wrong or it's not quite a shape that you like. So I'm going to use the It Girl Beauty book for this again. Now, before I do anything, um, usually I would probably use a primer, just prep your eye really well. I'm going to use the Superhero Eye Foundation here which is essentially a lovely kind of powdery primer. It goes on almost like, I don't want to use the word clay because that sounds thicker, but it's this really dense wash of powder that just absorbs any oil and gives you a nice canvas for whatever you're going to do. I think I got something in my eye earlier on, so you'll have to forgive me. I'm going to use the shade Flicker, this kind of coppery bronzy, and I'm going to take it on a small pencil shaped brush. Now, let me get my hand mirror. A few little tips when you're doing your liner. I would say where possible, look down into your mirror because that is going to give you like it naturally pulls the eye so that you're already kind of, you know, when you see a lot of people pulling the skin to make it tighter, looking down into your mirror gives you that kind of effect. However, your eye is still open, so you can see where you go in. And I'm going to just take that a little bit thicker through the curve of that eye and you can see how it kind of tapers off as we get further and further in. But that little pop of brown just clashes quite nicely with the blue. But it's still that traditional liner kind of shape. And I'm going to match the same on the other side. Now, the other side is my more difficult eye. I think we all have one of those. And I think the key is... Just keep practicing. And you know what as well? I think with liner, sometimes you can make it more difficult for yourself if you panic. I feel like you really need to grab the ball by the horns and just get yourself in there. And that is the best way to do it quickly and evenly. Now, I hope I'm matching these up here and not creating a whole new shape. So as you can see, I need to go a bit thicker. And also just remember as well, which is definitely the case with me, like our faces are not necessarily completely symmetrical. So for example, if I did a perfect two millimetre flick on each side, that might feel like the sensible thing to do. But if your eyes aren't perfectly symmetrical, it might mean that they don't look like they match. So just keep having a look at it and seeing that it feels good. Now, to speed things up, I'm going to just quickly go in with my Superhero Mascara. And then I'm going in with my It Cosmetics Lip Liner in Romantic Rose. I've taken this all over. And then I'm going to finish off with a little bit of the Laura Mercier Baby Glow Doss. Baby Doll Gloss. <laughs> Okay, there you go. I hope you enjoy. I'm going to try and string my words together a bit more articulately this afternoon and I will talk to you soon.